This is the Wednesday, October 7th meeting of the Landmarks Commission. Uh, first item we'll start with is the roll call. Susan? Here. Wait. Alderman Stoyer? I am here. Justin? He's just logging on. Ron? Present. Ian? And David? Present. I see Justin just logged in, and it looks like Ian is now logged in as well. Here. <laughs> Sorry if I... All members are here and accounted for. Uh, next item on tonight's agenda is the approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any comments, corrections, or changes to the agenda? No. Nope. Hearing none, I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, the agenda has been approved. Next item is item D, approval of the minutes from the October 1st, 2020 meeting of the Landmarks Commission. Uh, those minutes are in your packet. Did anybody have any corrections or comments uh, regarding those minutes? Hearing none, I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Now all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We are on to uh, item E, which is regular business. Uh, the first item is certificate of appropriateness 20-14. This is consideration with possible action on a design review for siding at 127 North Broadway. Uh, Jason, would you like to take us through this item? Um, I can do that. Uh, this building came to the Landmarks Commission a month or so ago, or maybe a little over a month now. Has it been two months, three months? I think it was in like June or July, Jason. <laughs> I lose track of stuff. Um, we're looking at the back side of the building on the right there, the white stuff and this is the building where they requested to put vinyl siding over the brick and I don't like vinyl siding but upon investigation of this it's clear that this brick the damage is largely already done um, the most failing particularly bad where you see that conduit running horizontally about a foot and a half or so below the top of the wall uh, the paint on the brick has done it no favors. It is spalling quite badly from moisture trying to escape the building. My recommendation to you some months ago was to not allow vinyl siding. With some soul searching and having gone there and been inside the apartment, I'm concerned that without some sort of remedy to stop the moisture, the situation will continue to deteriorate. It seems that the proper by the book remedy would be to gently remove the paint and have somebody come and thoroughly do a good masonry repair. But I don't know that that's entirely practical and that you're necessarily getting the big bang for the buck given that it's on the back of the building. Also noting too, very importantly, but the other side of the back already received vinyl siding years ago. So if you look at it as a work in progress, and the Landmarks Commission kind of came into being in the middle of that work in progress, it's a little hard to say, you know, we need to hold their feet to the fire and make sure the mason comes out and does a thorough mason job on that wall. So as an interim measure for the next 10, 20 years, I would not be averse to seeing vinyl siding on the back of that building. Discussion? Yes. Go ahead, Alderman Freer. Okay, thank, thank you, Paul. Jason, um, you know, the front of the building looks great. You know, not a problem. The back, I did, you know, I follow you on all of that and I've seen the back of that building as well. I guess, like you said, the bang for the buck, I think one of the issues is that 
would it, it would be seems like it would be cost prohibitive pretty much for them to try to replace all that entire back it's it's in the alley it is not you know i'm not sure what our specs are for for you know for a lot of buildings you know it's you know the street the street view etc um i would it would be nice if they could redo the brick but to me it seems like it would be a gargantuan project it would be very expensive and it would be cost prohibitive so i'm leaning toward your recommendation at this time so that's all for me right now i, I want to follow up though and and say that cost is never something that really factors into what i say um it's generally generally accepted that any deterioration is kind of the fault of the owner and the cost associated with that is self-inflicted. But, you know, we've got a relatively young preservation ordinance with teeth and frankly, this alleyway is not well-traveled. You have to go looking for it if you want to see the back of this building. So I think that the Band-Aid of vinyl siding is better than, than nothing at this point. Can, a, can it be made that it is to be considered a a temporary solution with a sunset? <clears throat> if you're asking me, I don't know that the ordinance really permits that. Um, you know, we could have some institutional memory, I suppose, and I can put that in our file for this property, noting that this was discussed and felt that eventually a proper mason repair job was appropriate for the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've obviously spent some money on the front of the building, um, which is their revenue producing piece of it. Um, and, you know, I, yeah, it's, it would be, sure would be nice to have um, a plan that long term it would be fixed as opposed to vinyl siding going on now and you know 15 years down the road a second layer of vinyl siding going on because the first one's deteriorated so I, I guess it's just we open the door how, how far are you opening the door you know what I'd like to see is the brick given an opportunity to dry out and it's currently just never going to do that with that paint on it and without the proper repairs to the mortar and without a lot of bricks. Just putting the siding over it will be like an umbrella in the wind, I guess. It'll keep the water off of it, hopefully, and it should dry out. Mm -hmm. Got a couple of points to make. Ian, I concur with what you're alluding to about setting a precedent. Uh, putting vinyl over brick, uh, that sits poorly with me initially. Uh, but also I've got a question for you, Jason, about advocating protecting the brick. Will the vinyl necessarily protect the brick or has the water gotten in there, been trapped by the paint, and that freeze-thaw cycle is going to continue regardless of uh, it being exposed or not? You know, I look at this a little bit like a science experiment. Um, I walked through that upstairs apartment on the inside, and it's clear that the moisture isn't just escaping through the outer permeable layer of the brick, but it's also escaping into the apartment. So we have interior damage that's coming as a result of this moisture intrusion. My hope is that the interior damage would stop with the vinyl siding. And I'd go one further and, you know, doubly cross my fingers and hope that the brick itself would have a chance to dry out. Um, this winter, I would expect more spalling to occur even behind vinyl siding, but that's going to happen either way. Yep. Mm. Uh, I would offer up that while I don't feel the vinyl siding is the appropriate way to repair this, I think it's I think it's a mistake. Um, noting that this is not viewable by the main street and it's only off of the back alley, um, I, I'm inclined to to move forward with approving this um, because I don't see another alternative 
presented at this point in time. And I think stabilization of the building is probably more important than pressing harder for the right solution. So I guess I would, I would present a motion to approve this as it's been presented to us. Like second. Yeah. Uh, more discussion on that motion? I'd, I'd, I'd go along with the motion generally. I think we should have somewhere in the approval that we, we see this as a, um, a fix for now, but that it isn't the correct approach to the long-term integrity of that building. It's going to keep happening. What is the life expectancy of vinyl siding anyway? 20 years? 25? My house, it's three days, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends on the quality. It depends on... I'd also say know. that this isn't an untraveled uh, or an un non-visible uh, area. I mean, uh, there there's... Uh, wide open space there. There's the the play community theaters there. Um, you know, I, I go down that alley often. I, I think the alleys of, of Green Bay are neglected, sadly. And uh, a lot of people use these alleys for photo shoots, and um, you know, they they can be they could be beautified. I'm not saying I'm opposed to the vinyl siding, but uh, the idea that because it's not visible, um, I think is wrong. I'm actually opposing this uh, for those reasons, but also in particular, we haven't heard any alternatives. There hasn't been an examination of the existing brick to determine if, uh, if what Jason suggested uh, can be done reasonably. Uh, I don't like this as a precedent setting uh, situation for us. As uh, uh, Justin just said, it is not entirely out of the way. Uh, and I see other building owners coming to us and saying, well, how about doing this on mine because you allowed it here? So I actually am going to oppose this request. And you know, that's an excellent point. I will say though that with half of the back already having been vinyl sided, you start to see similarities with say, the Burners and Schober's architects building where we had seen some windows already replaced. And then of course, granted approval to continue to replace windows into the future. Now I know we've taken a, a positive view of replacement windows and we have not taken a positive view of vinyl siding, but, but the pictures here don't show that the opposite side was already clad in vinyl many years ago. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? So there's a motion on the floor, it's been seconded. I guess I'm gonna call for a vote on this. Uh, I would vote yay. Susan? Yay. Alderman Stoyer? Yes. Justin? I'd say nay. Ron? Yay. Ian? No. And David? No. So by my math, the uh, motion was defeated. No, uh, no motion. that carries. It's 4-3. Yep. Did it? Sorry. Yep. It's late in the day. <laughs> I had somebody else is keeping track. <laughs> OK. Uh, we're on to item E2, Certificate of Appropriateness 20-26. Consideration with possible action on a design review for a clear story window addition at 110 South Adams Street. Jason. So the architects here have provided a revised line of sight drawing. And to be very brief, the revised drawing created for me some, some lack of confidence in the first drawing and that lack of confidence spills over into the second drawing. On the upside, the architect proposed building a plywood mock-up of the clear story window on top of the building so that you could inspect that. And given my 
my lack of confidence in the drawings, I suggest that you request that the architect build that plywood mock-up and that then either you or I can walk around and I'll take pictures and we'll, we'll see what there is to see. Um, I would like to add that that request was sent to the petitioner once we once they offered up that option. Um, they are here with us, so I'm not sure if that has been installed. I have not received an email noting that it was installed. So if you'd like to open up the floor and have a discussion to figure that piece out, you're more than welcome to. I'll make a motion to open the floor. Second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the floor is open for comment. Hey, this is Dean Crow from Rodak. We did uh, we did make a mock-up yesterday, and uh, pictures were taken and emailed in earlier today. I want to say like ten o'clock or so, somewhere around that time. The view um, as we went around, we actually moved the clear story back one bay um, to make it even less visible. Um, since you don't have the pictures up, it's it's tough to to see it, but uh, the only view where you could, when you see the pictures that were taken and submitted, the only view that you could actually see the very top of the clear story was when you were across the street, standing on the opposing, on the opposite sidewalk. And it was, what you saw was very similar to when you looked to the west of how much you saw of the air handler. So it was very similar in profile of that. Um, apologize that you guys don't have those uploaded here, but uh, um, you know, what pictures were taken? Uh, Dean, those photos were not received by me. If you would like to share your screen to show those um, or send them over to me to share, we could do that as well. Um, let me see if I can find them here. Hold on. When do you hunt them over? So let me see here. I didn't receive them either. I didn't see them. While we're waiting for Dean to see if he has those photos, can I ask a clarification as to what we're actually reviewing? And I apologize because I know I was absent at the last meeting when this project was first presented. Um, but the drawings that are in our packet, to me, indicate that there's work being proposed for the facade, the existing stone facade on Adam Street. Is that something that's actually being proposed that is incorrect the only work that is being done is on the clear story itself there is no facade no windows the only i shouldn't say that the only thing that was being done that was approved on the last meeting was a entrance door where there was about 16 inches of brick within three brick courses um, that was and that was approved at the last meeting to make that as wide as the window opening. There is nothing being done along Adam Street. Okay, thank you. I, I drove by last night. I was aware that that um, mock-up was going to go in, uh, and I drove by again this morning. And driving by, I could not see the mock-up on the roof, um, which is a good thing, I guess. So, um, I think the position of it is is the model. It's really <clears throat> how large is the model? Is I mean. Is is it a size, the final size will be, or? Yes. Yeah. It, it was the same height, but it was only one sheet of plywood wide in each direction. It was an L shape representing the corner. <laughs> okay, well, the most I, visible corner. Yep. I think I got it here. If, uh, uh, if you can see my screen. Yes. Yep. So um, we a little bit. <clears throat> so you can see we took the pictures in the exact same location. Um, trying to zoom in. Um, you can see our 
our workers up on, up or on the roof right here. Um, but when you look on the north side of Walnut, <clears throat> you can see the plywood basically on by the second car to the left. And if you look um, just by the just left of the initiative one sign, you can see the air handler sticking up halfway up the window, which is about the same height. That is the only, and that would be the, um, excuse me, the east, uh, northeast corner of the clear story, and it would go uh, one bay, you know, to the next dark line um, of the of the building. Can you can you point to that, uh, Dean, with your hand on the? Sure, right there. Can you see that's that? That's the plywood. Put in here's the air handler. And the plywood would extend. Plywood would extend that. from it goes from this brick line to this brick line. Right. So maybe you can pan to the other images. Sure. You can see from the parking lot there that um, really doesn't come in the uh, case. It's like yep. right here. -ish. And then going the other way. This is along, this is right at the corner. It's right here, but you really can't see it. And then uh, here you can't see it at all. Hmm. And like I say, we moved it one bay back. So from the previous submittal, it was moved um, 12 feet back. Any I'm trying to any other pictures? No, I think that covers. Okay. So it was it was moved, but the dimensions were not changed. It's the same size as it was initially. Correct. Correct. It was. It's the same height that was moved back. I'm going to stop sharing my screen unless someone, unless you want to keep looking. Mm -hmm. Why is this being added? Um, for there, right now it's a space that's not being used. The corner, the corner that faces Adam Street is a vacant area. They are expanding into that space, and it's an overall large um, area assembly area, and they're trying to get as much natural light in there as possible so that's that's what they're that's what they're that's the reason for it okay original drawings that were sent at the last meeting had the incorrect pair excuse me the incorrect parapet height right um and so the visual of what you could see <clears throat> you could see was exaggerated. Um, that was corrected on the set of drawings. Um, so, you know, the the applicant in this case didn't help themselves by having the incorrect drawings the first time around. That's subsequently been revised and the drawings are better and the mock-up, if that corner is the actual height um, is pretty pretty invisible from just about everywhere except on the far side of the road on a setback correct that is, that is the actual height we actually have a a picture that I can send you for or mock up in the shop with a tape measure on it so we can send you that too if you'd like that 
Well, I had uh, I had considerable objections to what was initially presented uh, last time, and I think that what you've done here is address all of that. And I am uh, I am impressed, and I absolutely approve this. Uh, so as soon as we more, I would be making a motion to approve as presented. Uh, I don't need to see any more. I'm impressed. I concur. Well, I'll make a motion to close the floor. Thank you, Ron. Second. Second. Aye. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> okay, Paul. I'm new to make a motion. All in favor of closing the floor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any, any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, David. I think you were about to say something. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to accept as presented. I'll second that motion. Uh, discussion? Uh, I'm just going to throw out an editorial comment. I'm well aware that this is one of the last examples of Art Deco architecture left in Green Bay. Is that for and so my hope is that the building owner understands the value of that. Um, and hopefully we don't have to deal with anything in the future as far as that goes, because it's, it's a great example of, 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 of a style of architecture that just isn't around that much anymore. Yep. So. Any other discussion on the motion? Can we get some vinyl on it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. No. Okay, I would call for a vote then. Uh, Susan? Yes. Alderman Sawyer? Yes. Justin? Aye. Ron? Yes. Ian? I'm going to abstain as I did last time. David? Yes. And I also vote yes. So motion carries. Thank you. Um, next item on our agenda is certificate of appropriateness 20-29, consideration with possible action on the design review for a rear deck located at 131 South Washington Street. Jason, could you take us through this one? Yes, 131 South Washington Street is Al's Hamburger. The request comes from the neighboring Kittner's Pub. You see it on the left there. Behind Al's Hamburger, there's a courtyard. There's a tree growing in it in the photograph, and here's the tree growing in it from an aerial view. And then further behind on the alley, there's a one-story garage. The request is to add, add a needed deck between Al's restaurant and the garage. I think it's about nine feet, some odd inches above the ground level. Like if I squint just right, should be invisible to everything except for drones and satellites. Um, there's an existing opening in the side of Kittner's bar. They'll be fitting that with a door. And the recommendation is to approve this as it has no impact on the historic integrity of the buildings or the district. But I'd like to make a motion to approve. Go right ahead. I am. <laughs> I will well, make, a make a motion. Two seconds. <laughs> Any discussion on that motion? I guess I only have a question. Um, is is there a requirement for a second means of egress from that space? Um. Well, you've got one means of egress out to Washington Street. And the second one would be through Kittner's, I guess. So this also had to go through protection and policy, I believe, for the extension of that liquor license. And it also mm -hmm. goes through site plan approval at the inspection level. So they would catch all that health safety stuff. Okay. I just wanted to point that out that we don't want to create a condition in here where a person can't get out. Well, Ian, I think your comments are well taken. I, I, you know, if this drawing that we're looking at right now is accurate, 
Uh, well, it's not accurate, actually. Uh, the door that's shown on Washington Street is not in that location, and it swings in inward. So there's hopefully somebody, when this thing goes before planning, takes note of that. Because um, I, I would agree that it doesn't feel like it's set up very well for an emergency situation. I then I believe we should add that our motion and that our approval would be contingent upon that, the fact that it meets those requirements. That would be fine for me. Yeah, we because you, you're all absolutely right. From here, it doesn't look like there may be another way out of there. So. So is the friendly amendment to meet inspection and fire safety codes? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alderman Stoyer, you agree with that? Not I'm motion? fine. Yes, I am. I'm fine. Be a big that. catapult back there. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, for a vote on this motion, um, Susan. Yes. Alderman Stoyer. Yes. Justin. Sure. Ron? Yes. Ian? Yes. David? Yes. I also vote yes. So motion carries unanimously. Did you have a second on that one? Um, I was the second, I believe. You were. Yeah, I thought it was Ron. Okay, I missed that, sorry. I think Justin and I actually seconded at the exact same time. I, yeah. I, I heard his voice at the same time. So. You, you owe me a coat. Yeah, I, okay. heard, I heard catapult. That's all I heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next item on the agenda for tonight is consideration with possible action on the selection of a firm to complete phase one of the intensive historic survey report update for the city of Green Bay. Um, we met last week and had presentations by the um, three firms that were shortlisted. And I think the intention was that we were going to recommend one of those firms tonight for award of that project. Yes, so we will convene it's a closed session. We just need a motion and a second and a vote to that effect. And then the chair will meet, will read the commission closed, um, closed session language. And then we will move anyone who is not a part of our commission or our staff to a waiting room. The meeting will be paused for open discussion. Then when we go back into open session, we'll take another vote to convene back into open session. And then from there, take a vote to select that firm. Motion to close the floor or a motion to go into closed session. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 opposed? Okay. So if you could read the language on the agenda about convening to closed session. Certainly. <clears throat> the Landmark Commission may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.85 i.e. Wisconsin statute for purposes of deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining reasons. The commission may thereafter reconvene an open session pursuant to section 19.85 paragraph 2 Wisconsin statute to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. All right, we are back. So does anybody, would anybody like to make a motion based on our discussion in closed session? I'll, I'll make a motion that we, uh, that we accept the proposal of legacy architecture to do the intensive resource, resource survey report for the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin. A second. Any further discussion on that motion? Uh, just one point of uh, what, what was uh, enlightening was talking about limiting the survey to what hasn't been done. Do we need to include anything to that effect in this motion or is that more of a staff level interaction? Um, that's something we can discuss during contract. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess my only discussion point is is I would want to uh, 
go ahead and, and thank all three of the firms that submitted on this. Um, I think that the presentations were very professional by all three of them. And quite frankly, they're all outstanding, I think, in, in their capabilities and, and what they do uh, on behalf of historic preservation efforts. So I, I, I think that you know everybody would agree that this was a difficult decision um, moving forward. So any other discussion? Uh, then I would call for a vote on this motion. And uh, Susan? Yes. Alderman Stoyer? Yes. Justin? Yes. Ron? Yes. Ian? Yes. David? Yes. And I am abstaining from this vote. Motion carries. So congratulations to Legacy Architecture. Okay. The next item on tonight's agenda is uh, uh, item F, informational. Uh, so the first thing would be a staff update. I have no update. Jason? Big head nod there. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Next item would be the date of the next meeting. It says on the agenda our next meeting is Wednesday, October 21st. Stephanie, are you anticipating that we're going to have applications for that meeting? I love you all, but I hope not. I feel like three meetings in one month is too many, <laughs> and we're all getting a little stir crazy already. Um, I haven't gotten any applications yet, but that window does not close until next week. So. Um, if we don't, you know, if I don't get any applications in, we will be canceling that meeting and I'll set on a notification next week. Okay, wonderful. Um, and I, I thank everybody on the commission for attending all these meetings. It, it's been a busy month, probably the busiest one we've had since we started. So no more 12 minute meetings, David. <laughs> it was 13 if I remember right. <laughs> 12, 12 is your goal. <laughs> Uh, hearing nothing else, I would make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second the I'll motion. Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>